If you're a filmmaker, you've probably heard about filters. A filter is basically a piece of glass that you put in front of your lens in order to achieve a specific effect in your footage. And I would say that there are three common types of filters. ND stands for neutral density and an ND filter reduces the amount of light entering the lens, just like you put on your sunglasses when it's too bright outside. This lets you shoot in the correct shutter speed, which is normally double your frame rate, without the need to increase your aperture. That means that you have a smooth motion blur and you don't lose that beautiful depth of field. And in order to change the strength of these sunglasses, there are variable ND filters, which let you adjust their intensity by simply twisting one piece of glass to another. CPL stands for Circular Polarizer Slash Linear, and with this one you can reduce the glare from reflective surfaces like cars, windows or the sky. It helps you get rid of reflections you don't want to see and lets you create more contrast in your video by darkening these bright parts. MIST stands for, well... Mist. <laughs> if you've ever seen a car driving along a road on a foggy morning, you will know what it looks like. Basically, a mist filter is a thin wall of mist in front of your lens. It overall softens your image and gives your highlights a nice glow around them. Mist filters are very common in the world of filmmaking as you can achieve a sort of dreamy look with them. As you still need to correct for the aperture and shutter speed, there are also mist X, V and D filters, which is basically a variable and D filter on top of a mist filter. As variable and D filters with a strength from zero to infinity tend to lose image quality and create weird vignettes and X patterns. They are often separated into a pair of two filters with different strengths, like a 2 to 5 stop VND and a 6 to 9 stop VND. So in the end, with all of these different types of filters, you're going to carry around a lot of them. And every single time you want to change these different filters, you have to unscrew one and screw on the other one. But today I'm going to show you why it doesn't need to be like that anymore. Welcome to a new video. <laughs> so yeah, I'm back in the LED gamer setup here at home. Quite the contrast to Mallorca, to be honest. As you might already know, all of my camera filters are from a company called Freewell. No matter if it is my Sony a7S III, my DJI Mavic Air 2, my DJI FPV GoPro 9 or Insta360 Go 2, I always went for Freewell because their filters are of a great quality and still have a very reasonable price. And now they just launched the world's first versatile magnetic filter system. That's how they call it and I think it is a completely new approach to how we use filters on consumer cameras like the Sony a7S III for example. Before we're gonna go out and shoot with these filters, I'm first going to explain exactly how the system works. So when you open the box, you'll first see the installation instructions. If you scan the barcode, you'll see a video on how to properly use the filter system. Beneath that, you will find the Freewell leather case, which I've already been using for the past year, and I have to say that I absolutely love this one, because I have a quick access to all of the different filters in a very organized way. When it comes to the different parts of the system, we have a base ring, a VND base, a VND X mist base, an ND225 slash CPL glass, an ND629 slash ND32 CPL CPL glass and a pretty dope looking lens cap. The base ring and lens cap can also be purchased separately in order to use them on all of your different lenses. To get started you just have to screw the base ring onto your lens and from this point on everything else works with magnets. What many people don't know is that variable and D filters consist of two pieces of glass that you turn against each other in order to regulate the intensity of them. So if you have a traditional variable and D filter then you have all of these glass layers just baked into one where you can twist them against each other. But what Freewell did here was to actually separate those two pieces of glass to make their system as versatile as possible. After mounting the base ring, the first step is to choose the base glass and the second step is to choose the filter glass. And depending on these choices, you can build all kinds of filters. Let me show you. So, for the base we have three options. The VND base, the VND X mist base, or no base at all. If you mount the VND base and you don't attach any filter glass on top of that, you will have an ND filter of one stop. 
If you have the VND base attached, you can either mount the ND2 to 5 glass or the ND6 to 9 glass. All you gotta do is align the two A symbols on the side of the base ring and the filter glass and boom, you have a variable ND filter. On the side of the filter, you now see the different hard stops from 2 to 5, which makes it really easy to see how much the filter underexposes. At the beginning and end, the filter is locked, so you know exactly when you reach the minimum and maximum ND strength. Now if you want to change from a 2 to 5 stop VND to a 6 to 9 stop VND, you just have to switch the filter glass and you have the stronger VND attached in seconds. If you mount the VND X mist base, the process is basically the same. Without another filter glass attached, it will be an ND of one stop with that soft mist look we talked about earlier. And when you attach one of the different VND filter glasses, you will have a variable ND filter with that mist look. So basically, you just attach the right base for the look you're going for and then you choose the right VND D strength depending on how bright it is. But here's where it gets even better. If you don't mount any base glass and you flip the 2 to 5 stop VND filter glass around, you can now attach it to the base ring and you will have a CPL filter. On the front of the filter glass you can always see what kind of filter you're attaching right now. So if you flip the 2 to 5 stop filter around you will now see CPL written on the side facing away from the lens. And if you flip the 6 to 9 stop VND filter glass around you will see ND32 CPL written on it, which means that you have an ND32 filter with a polarizing function as well. Alright, I get that this might sound super complicated if you just started with filmmaking, ND32, polarizing, VND, mist, all that stuff, but if you are a professional filmmaker and you use all of these filters on every shoot, this probably just blew your mind. I honestly think that in my entire filmmaking journey, I haven't seen any filter system this versatile, because if we just add up all of the different combinations that I showed you, we have a total of eight different filters in one single system, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> And the best thing is that you never have to unscrew the base ring from your lens in order to change these filters because everything can just be detached and attached via magnets. Like even the lens cap, you just throw it on there and you have it. Also, if you happen to use some of the old magnetic filters from Freewell, they are also compatible with the new system so you can also just stick them on here as well. Um, but yeah, I think that this filter system is just a really cool idea because just like we have matte boxes for these huge cinema cameras, we now have something comparable for consumer cameras like the Sony a7S III. But yeah, I think that's enough of talking. Let's actually go outside and test the quality and usability of these filters. Let's go. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like my Jordan. Give me the rock and I'm scoring. Hey, came from the bottom, that's foreign. I swear that I'm up for the sun in the morning. I need a Nike bag, give me the check I need the money and power, respect But I promise I'm repping the O to the dead Hey, I told him out of my way I don't got nothing to say Now they can't run on my pace Yeah, they know they're way the same 402, we rap the game Holy shit, it's sunny out here and it's freaking hot. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this um, short cinematic sequence. I just went out with my buddy Kamal to shoot some sort of video portrait slash fashion video. I've seen some of these videos on Instagram and I always wanted to try it. So I thought today would be a good opportunity to try it and to just push myself to learn something new. Let me know in the comments if you liked it. So usually when I shoot during daytime and it's really bright outside like right now, I always have the second variable in D strength in my back pocket. So if I would have the two to five stop on my camera like right now I would have the six to nine stop in my back pocket and I just do that in order to quickly switch my filters when the brightness of my situation changes for example if a cloud comes in and it gets darker then I have to switch to the two to five or if it clears up again and it's super bright then maybe I have to switch back to the six to nine stop filter and one thing which just always happened when I still used threaded filters was that I was just too lazy to switch filters like even though I already had it in my back pocket it was too much time for me to just like un screw one filter and screw on the other filter. Like in run and gun situations, it's really down to seconds if you get a shot or if you don't get a shot. And yeah, so I sometimes just didn't do it and I saw myself 
boosting my aperture where I kind of like lost my depth of fields or when I already had the strong ND filter on it and I didn't want to switch back to the lower one, I saw myself boosting the ISO, which causes a lot of noise in your footage. So I think in general, it's just really bad if your gear forces you to sacrifice the aesthetics of your videos. And with this filter system, I'm just able to switch ND strengths within seconds. Like I can just right now take this one off here, put on another ND strength, and now you don't see me. <laughs> so yeah, it just makes your life as a filmmaker a whole lot easier because you can always switch very, very quickly between the different ND strengths. And yeah, I think that this is super useful. You can also just take off the filter and shoot without any filter, which is nice if you're shooting in the evening, for example, and sometimes you have to use a filter for real time, but for slow motion, for example, you don't need to have one. So yeah, I think that this is one really cool thing about it. And also another cool thing is that all the filters from Freewell are actually waterproof, dust proof, scratch resistant and oil proof. So if you ever wanted to <laughs> just pour a bit of olive oil over your filters, you can do that. <laughs> Actually, that means that you can stick those filters in your back pocket and you don't have to worry about them getting scratched, which is really nice. And yeah, now we're just going to take a bit of a look at the mist filters. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. You must be blinded by the lights. We came to shine here. Watch it look daytime in the night We bring the vibes here We full of life, you keep the change Keep the change They hate and say we went and change I stay the same You must be blinded by the lights You must be blinded by the lights Lights Yeah, 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 yeah What did you think about that? I think it looked really cool. <laughs> I'm starting to like the look of mist filters more and more. I think that it just looks really cool if all of those highlights blend into the darker parts of your image. And yeah, I think it creates a cool look and not everybody's using it yet. Let's see how that turns out in the next years. But besides creating a cool look, mist filters can actually also help you when it comes to the storytelling of your videos. Like I, for example, used um, a mist filter when I shot the dream sequence of my how to find your passion video. I just wanted to make this scene look like a dream and I think that mist filters really help in doing that because the overall image is just a lot softer. But back then I didn't have this filter system so I still used the mist X V and D threaded filter from Freewell. The bad thing is that I shot this whole sequence at night when it was really dark and as I had a threaded filter all of the glass layers were already baked into it so I had to use a variable ND filter while shooting in pure darkness which kind of sucked yeah. Luckily I could just boost my ISO to 12,800 on my Sony a7S 3 as that is the second native ISO in S-Log3. So yeah, I was still able to get some clean shots out of this, but obviously I would have loved to just have a mist filter without a lot of ND strength in it. And that's what you can do with this filter system as well. You can just take off the variable ND filter glass and then you just have one stop of ND plus a mist filter, which is perfect for shooting with that mist look at night. One thing I was actually really skeptical about when Freewell sent this one out to me was whether or not the magnets would be strong enough to just hold up in action environments. Because I myself, I'm just running around while vlogging, while shooting YouTube videos, I'm hanging out of cars while shooting, and there's just nothing worse than if your filter just flips off while shooting and it's gone. But I can actually show you, I'm just going to unscrew it from here. So I just mounted it here on another lens and you can see if I just shake it as hard as I can, it just doesn't get off. So yeah, you would just really have to throw your camera out the window and then everything would be gone. But yeah, this thing really holds onto it and I think they actually got the perfect strength of the um, magnets because it is strong enough to keep on the lens but also loose enough to just take it off easily and also to use it like a normal threaded filter. It actually feels exactly the same, which is really cool. 
So, as I mentioned earlier, I've been shooting on this filter system already for the last couple of weeks. So I really put it to the test and I have to say that I really enjoy it. I don't use any of my normal filters anymore because it just speeds up my workflow so much. And I think especially if you shoot in stressful environments, then it's just 100% worth it to have gear, which makes one of those processes a bit easier. But yeah, now let's actually talk about the price of this filter system. So if you are to purchase each of these filters that you can achieve with the system in the threaded version, you're going to pay between 800 to 1000 US dollars. But Freewell is now offering the first 1000 sets of their magnetic filter system for 300 US dollars, another 1000 sets for 350 US dollars, and thereafter for 400 US dollars. So 400 is as expensive as it gets. And if you buy it earlier, you will get it cheaper. So yeah, I think the price is really good for what you get out of it because you have all of the filters that you need in one single system. And also if you're just a beginner in the world of filmmaking, I would much rather buy an expensive and good filter instead of just buying new filters all over again and wasting the quality of your videos because a filter is the only thing which separates your subject from your camera. So if your filters suck, then there's no use in having an expensive camera. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to check the magnetic filter system out, feel free to click on the link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun to just go out and shoot again with my friends. Also feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of the upcoming videos. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one.